Hi, this is Stuart Weems and thank you for listening to the Investopoly podcast. My goal is to give you simple, easy to understand strategies, insights and tips to help you master the game of building wealth. And in this episode, I'd like to talk about wrap accounts. Wrap accounts are a way of investing your super with full control and transparency. You see, often I find uh, self-managed super funds are over-recommended to people. So people might go off to their accountant and say I'm sick of super performance or I'm paying too much in fees or I really don't understand where how my monies are invested and I want to have more control over my super. And so their accountant uh, over the years in, has invariably suggested setting up a self-managed super fund, uh, which is a, a solution but sometimes not the best solution. Sometimes there's a cleaner, simpler and lower cost solution and that is a wrap platform. Plus, we also have to understand that if you set up your own self-managed super funds, it comes with a compliance responsibility and obligation. And so some people just don't want to necessarily either pay people uh, to deal with that for them or for them to deal with it in their own right. So before I talk about wrap accounts and how they're different to, say, industry super funds, let's be really clear. There's two types of super funds, industry super funds and retail super funds, typically speaking. Uh, You can put them into those two categories. So retail super funds are those that are operated by the insurance companies and the banks. So AMP, BT, Colonial, MLC, these kinds of guys, they're the big brands and they own most of the market share. Retail super funds, in my experience over the last 17 years of looking at clients' uh, super accounts, invariably charge high fees and deliver very poor investment returns. So if you're in a retail super fund, it's almost always going to be an inferior solution and you should look to rectify it. But before you switch out, you need to consider a couple of things. Ancillary benefits, if your, if your fund is connected with your employer, it's possible that your employer either pays for some insurances, Uh, um, some fees, fee rate, rebates and these sorts of things. So consider ancillary benefits. And then secondly, um, consider insurance. And if you do have ancillary benefits like free insurance uh, or you've got existing insurance in place that you can't necessarily replicate at a new uh, fund, what you could do is have two super accounts. You could establish a new wrap platform, but you could keep a minimum balance in your existing fund just to at least preserve those benefits. But as a as an overarching comment, retail super funds typically bad. So let's talk about industry super funds because obviously they get a lot of media attention. And they certainly do a lot of advertising, um, which you know I'd have to sit back and think about where's the value to members, their existing members of them advertising. All they're really doing is solidifying their own employment. Um, employment positions but anyway let's put that aside that's a completely different podcast for a completely different day but I've got four main concerns uh, with industry super funds now certainly they're not for profit businesses which uh, on the face of us face of it might make you feel more comfortable putting your super with them uh, but I believe they're also not for productivity also uh, which is um, uh, equally as bad as dealing with a profit motivated company I think uh, so my four, uh, four concerns are, uh, firstly, trade unions have a lot of control over the super funds. And there was a Royal Commission into the trade union and government, it's called trade union and government's corruption, uh, that occurred uh, a few years ago and sort of highlighted the amount of influence that the trade unions have uh, over the super funds themselves and also the members uh, that join those super funds. Um, and if the ALP wins the next election, uh, I think they'll probably, uh, th- certainly uh, their power won't be reduced. Uh, arguably, it might be increased. Uh, secondly, I'm concerned about the amount of money that's paid to trade unions from the super funds, um, and I'm concerned that there really isn't enough checks and balances. So certainly some payments, there might be a, a very rational, reasonable and commercial reason for making payments to a trade union that is a super fund to a trade union, okay, that's fine. Uh, but is there, are there enough checks and balances or is there enough independence? So a report in 2017 highlighted uh, that trade unions received over $18 million from industry super funds over a four-year period. And there was another article, and I have the links in the show notes, uh, from January this year stating that KPMG calculated that CBUS, 
an industry fund that sort of targets the construction uh, sector. Uh, CBUS paid over $7 million to trade unions over a four-year period. That's uh, your money, your retirement savings uh, that are going to the trade unions. Uh, and again, I'm just concerned that there aren't enough checks and balances with that. You know, the operation of one trade unions and two super funds investing people's retirement savings should be completely independent. Thirdly, as I've written about uh, in the past, and the link is in the show notes, is that there isn't a lot of transparency and accountability with regards to investment returns. So they don't benchmark their returns to indexes. Uh, they don't give you uh, more granular information about the performance of different investment managers' investment mandates, and they're internalising a lot of uh, a lot more investment management, uh, and that 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 certainly will help them lower fees. But I, I wonder if there'll be any drag on performance, and uh, where's the independence? You know, the uh, of really um, critically analysing. Uh, the overall performance. So there just there's enough transparency there. Uh, and finally, uh, as the Productivity Commission's report into super t- that was released towards the end of last year uh, said, there's just not enough scale. They should be reducing fees, not increasing them. And uh, the largest industry super fund, Australian Super, uh, uh, sent out an announcement last year that they were actually increasing fees rather than reducing them. Uh, and uh, with the amount of scale, it should go completely the other way. Now, having said all that, uh, industry super funds are better than retail super funds. Uh, and so if you're not going to use a wrap account, which I'll get to in a second, or a self-managed super fund, then an industry super fund is probably your best uh, solution. Host Plus, CBUS and Australian Super tend to be the the top three in terms of investment performance. And Australian Super has significantly lower fees than Host Plus, about half, uh, and uh, significantly lower than CBUS. So uh, typically, uh, Australian Super is my preferred option. Okay, so what is a, a wrap platform? So a wrap platform is really like a portal that allows you to invest your super. And it provides access to an extensive range of managed funds, index funds, um, domestic and international listed securities. And really good platforms will offer an array or what they call an investment menu of around about 600 different managed investments plus all listed stocks. So really it's like a a super bank account if you like uh, or a Comsec account and you can log in there and you can decide which managed funds including wholesale and retail managed funds and which stocks either exchange traded funds or direct shares you'd like to invest your super in. The RAP platform will take care of all the administration requirements, including you know, reporting of super contributions, payment of contribution tax and uh, other taxes, provide you with annual statements and so forth. So it's really very, very simple. You pay them a f- an administra- administration fee, which I'll get to, uh, and they'll look after everything. And you just log in online and you can see what your investments are doing and how you want to invest your money. The RAP platform will also provide you with investment performance reporting so that you can compare the performance of your super to industry funds or to indexes, which is very important because if you're going to manage your own money, uh, then I would say that you can't manage what you don't measure and you must absolutely measure performance, something that I think probably a lot of self-managed super fund uh, owners or or operators don't do and should do. Uh, So in essence, uh, a RAP platform is very similar to an industry fund in that it's very simple to operate and doesn't come with a lot of extra work, uh, but gives you a lot more transparency and flexibility around the investments. So what are the benefits? And that's a good segue into what are the benefits over and above the industry super funds. Uh, So if you share my concerns with the industry super funds, what are the benefits of using a wrap platform? Well, firstly, you've got full transparency. So you're in complete control of who you pay and how much you pay to each individual party. So you'll pay the RAP platform provider administration fee. And you can judge that RAP platform provider on its product and service. And if another RAP platform provider comes out with a better price, a better service, you can switch to them. So you're in control of who administers your super. And then your next decision in terms of how to invest those monies will be either to uh, invest them in ETFs, managed funds or direct shares. And if it's an ETF or managed fund, 
uh, that fund manager will charge you an investment fee to invest those monies. You will be able to hold each investment manager accountable for their performance. So you'll be able to say, okay, I pay, I pay this investment manager 0.4 of 1% and they beat the index last year. Well, then you'll be happy. But if they start to really underperform compared to the index and they're charging maybe even higher fees than that, then you can sack them and move the money elsewhere. And lastly, if you're paying for advice in terms of if you're engaging an independent financial advisor, uh, you can pay them a fee from your RAP account. Uh, and again, you can hold them accountable for their performance and service and advice and so forth. So complete transparency. Secondly, you've got full control over your investment methodology. So if you want to adopt a passive investment methodology, so a rules-based, evidence-based approach as opposed to an active management, and I've got a link into the, in the show notes more about why you might want to do that, well, you can adopt a completely passive uh, methodology, but something much better than what the, uh, the industry funds uh, put together. And lastly, you've got full control over your asset allocation. So investors can't control markets and they can't control returns, but what they do have 100% control of is where their money is invested. How much is invested in the Aussie stock market? How much is invested in the US or international? How much is in bonds and fixed interest versus shares? They're decisions that you have full control over and ultimately that's your most important decision as as an investor. So if you want to take a view that, say, for example, the US market is coming towards the end of an economic cycle, long-term indicators are certainly indicating that longer-term returns, so the returns over the next decade in the US market, will be well below average. So if, based on those indicators, if you want to reduce your US exposure, uh, you, can, you can do that and you've got complete control over that. Uh, so industry super funds do have an option called Member Direct, which allows people to invest their monies in uh, ETFs or direct shares, uh, but doesn't allow uh, managed investments. Uh, and so I think it's an inferior option from that perspective uh, because you know there, there's a fund manager called Dimensional Fund Advisors uh, that has a very robust, very, very robust rules-based passive investment methodology approach, which I think will be even more important uh, in the in a more volatile or um, a value based market uh, moving forward compared to the bull market that we've just experienced. Uh, so, how much do RAP platforms charge? Well, uh, I looked at a couple of examples. So, if you have a relatively modest amount of super, uh, they're slightly more expensive than industry super funds. So, if you had a hundred thousand dollar balance, you would pay around $720 in admin fees plus around $290 in investment fees. So about 1%, about $1,000 compared to Australian Super, which would cost you $897, so about $900. So it's about $100 more expensive on a balance of $100,000. However, if you have a larger balance, say half a million dollars, uh, a wrap platform solution will be cheaper than the industry fund. So I worked out the total fees would be about 3800 versus Australian Super 4200 So about $400 uh, or, or just over 10% cheaper uh, than an industry super fund and giving you a lot more flexibility and transparency as well. Obviously, that comparison is to Australian Super. Uh, uh, but, but obviously, uh, other industry funds charge a lot more, so the difference is, is even more stark. Uh, the good news is that there's a lot of downward fee pressure in the RAP platform space. Uh, in the US, they deliver these platforms at a lower cost um, and uh, fees have been coming down. BT reduced their RAP platform fees uh, last year uh, and I understand Macquarie is going to do it this year. Uh, so the trend, I think, in, over the next five years will be downward pressure on fees, which will make these products even more attractive, uh, in my view. Uh, Macquarie is the largest independent platform in Australia um, and therefore has arguably the best uh, economic scale to deliver uh, fee reductions. Uh, Other notable RAP platform providers are called NetWealth and Hub24 if you want to sort of check them out. Now, a word of warning. If you um, don't have a clear strategy on how you're going to invest your super monies, and you don't have enough expertise and experience to work it out yourself, and you're not going to engage an independent financial advisor to help you, forget about RAP platforms. 
Because one thing I've witnessed is, particularly with people that establish self-managed super funds, there's a whole lot of people that did that and then did nothing with the money. It just sat in cash. And in that regard, they would have been much better off just putting their money in an industry fund and forgetting about it and not getting involved. So if you don't have the skills and experience or you're not going to engage someone to help you, don't worry about it. Use an industry fund. Similarly, if you think you'll be tempted to make silly investment decisions, you know, invest in high-risk speculative stocks, for example, uh, then refrain from setting up a wrap account. You know, you having more control over your super is probably a negative thing rather than a positive thing if you're um, tempted to make those sorts of decisions. So again, stick to an industry super fund and so forth. So there you go as a wrap up. Don't automatically think that the only way to gain more control over your super and more transparency over your super is to start a self-managed super fund. In fact, unless you want to invest in direct property or unlisted investments or you have some very specific estate planning needs, it's likely your self-managed super fund is not the best option for you to take get more control over your super and wrap platforms uh, can really fulfill that space, that void deliver better control and transparency at ultimately a lower cost than industry super funds. Uh, so there you go. I hope that's been useful. Uh, if you know of anyone that would enjoy listening to the podcast, uh, please do share. Until next week, bye for now.